Hello everybody, my name is Sherry, my dog's name is Sunny, and you are tuning in for Therapy Dog Talk, a weekly show where we talk with different therapy dog teams around the world and find out more about their story and the impact that they're making. If you're just getting started and you're not really sure where to get started, we have a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. If you do check that out, please let me know. I would love to hear your feedback about it and whether or not it's helpful for you, as well as where you're planning to or are working or volunteering with your dog. So today's guest is Kaylee and her dog, Leo. If you joined us, oh, I think it was about six weeks ago. <laughs> this is actually our second take because unfortunately, I didn't get the recording downloaded in time, so I deeply apologize, but how great that we get to talk to them again to make sure that their story still lives on on the podcast. So I will pause there and go ahead and get her in here because I see that she's in the room. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you today? Good. <laughs> We're a little less confusing today going live from the Therapy Dog Talk account, so... <laughs> Yeah, yes. I know it was interesting because this show originally started just as an Instagram live series on Sunny's account. And I had no idea where we were going to go with it. None. No clue whatsoever. It just grew to the point where it got its own account. And when we first recorded, like six weeks ago, you we were like, why are you on Sunny's account? I was like, you know, if you're asking that, it's probably time to switch. So <laughs> your influence made a difference. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this will be fun to do this again. And Maybe I have some more stories because, you know, six weeks of having Leo at school with me. So, yeah, I know when we talked before, you had really just got started bringing him to school with you. But I do want to provide a little more context before we jump into that for those who didn't join us before and don't get to hear your story because we don't have the previous recording. <laughs> <It's okay>. um, <laughs> so for those who aren't familiar, would you please introduce us to yourself and to Leo? Yeah, my name is Kaylee Jungman, and I am a school counselor in the Kansas City area, elementary school counselor, and I bring my therapy dog, Leo, with me two days a week, and I'm actually at two different schools. Both are elementary, so he gets to go to two different schools with me each week. That's really great. Yeah, I remember now that you go to two different schools, and he comes with you. He goes one day to each school, right? Or has that changed? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. just one day, yep. Okay, awesome. And how did you first find out about therapy dogs, Kaylee? Well, last year I went to a school counselor conference and there was a session on therapy dogs. And I was really interested in that because I love dogs. And I thought, well, I'll check this out to see other school counselors that have therapy dogs. And I just learned a lot and I was really inspired. And I felt like Leo, my dog that I had at the time would be a really good fit for it. So I just started pursuing that with my dog, Leo, and he was able to pass his classes over the summer. And so he's been coming to school with me this year. That's awesome. And remind me, where did he take his classes at? It's Jeremy Reinhardt Dog Training here where I live. And he was amazing. That's great. What was the program like for you all? It was really hands-on. Jeremy came into our house and worked with my Leo, which, by the way, he's a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. And Jeremy also has a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, so that helped him kind of help me understand Leo and help the best I can with him becoming a therapy dog. And so we would go to, like, we first started out at the house, and then we went outside, and we worked on, like, healing and things like that. And then we went to like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, get Leo exposure to loud noises, a lot of different people. The trainer came with me for all of those things. Okay, very cool. So you really felt like you had a guide walking with you through the whole process. Yes. Were there anything specifically about Leo's breed that he was able to give you insight on since he had a dog who's also that breed? Yeah, so Leo is a bit more, he can be kind of skittish, not around people, but around loud noises. And so he told me that his dog was like that too. I and mean, just like, you know, if I drop something in the kitchen, he just gets scared. Mm -hmm. And my other dog, which is a black lab, he's just like, you know, you drop something. But Leo just gets scared about those kind of noises. And so it's kind of been hard having him at school. That's one of the things that he doesn't like. And I don't like putting him in places where it is loud. 
And so I just, the kids are really good about knowing that about Leo. So when I come into the classroom, they're so quiet. They're sitting still. They're not moving their chairs. And so I also have shared with the class that Leo has gone through some trauma last year, which I don't know if I shared that on my last podcast with you, but no, I don't think so. He got shot by a BB gun about a year ago from our neighbor's kid. It was just kind of a fluke thing. So Leo just doesn't really like loud noises. Luckily, you know, he likes people still, but just like loud noises, fast movements sometimes don't go well with Leo. So my trainer and I have been working on that with Leo and I just make sure that I don't overload Leo on those things. Because mm-hmm. I know him really well, so I just know when to give him a break or when I know that he's had too much stimulation with loud noises or too many people around. Yeah, I bet some of your kids can relate to that when they're working through hard things that happen in their lives, too. Yeah, so that's actually opened up a lot of conversations when kids find out that Leo has gone through a hard time as yeah. well. I don't know, they just feel like they can open up more to me. Just, I don't know, knowing that Leo's kind of gone through some hard stuff, too. That must be really special and powerful for you to see that impact that his story has on them where they feel more comfortable sharing their story with you. Yeah, I can't share exactly the instances just because of confidentiality, but of course, um, just so many cool stories from kids that I've met with like all last year because it was my second year at the school. And then this year having Leo with me. It's just crazy how like the first session we had with Leo and me and a student, just how much more they're open. Like, oh, wow, you've never told me that. Yeah. And I don't know, Leo's just really good about the one-on-one interactions with students, like having one student in my office and me. He's just really good about if the student like gets emotional, like he'll go over and give them a kiss on the hand or just sit next to them. And then sometimes the kids get on the floor and lay down with Leo and he just really does good on the one-on-one time. That's really great. It sounds like he's really been a catalyst for change with your students. So yeah, for sure. That's awesome. What was it you initially recognized about Leo that you thought would make him enjoy therapy dog work? Leo loves people. He just really does. And he just has like a really sweet demeanor about him. He's so gentle. And he looks at you in the eyes. Like some dogs don't do that. But Leo, he will look at you in the eyes when you're like with him or near him. And I think that, I know that just kind of stood out to me and something that I thought would be really good for a therapy dog in the school. Yeah. What do you think his favorite part is about coming to school with you? Honestly, if Leo could talk, I would say his favorite part is whenever I take him outside to go to the playground and it's just him and he has the whole playground to himself because it's fenced in. He absolutely loves that. He loves being outside. I have allowed him to go outside with the students at recess and that's been really fun. He loves that. Some of the students didn't know the expectation though for that because I hadn't really gone over that. And so they chased him at recess and he was really scared of that because there's like this bunch of kids just chasing him. So yeah, um, that can be terrifying. (laughs) Yeah. So I made the mistake there of not going over the expectations for that before I went out there with him. But next time I do that, I'm going to make sure the kids that are out there know like, you know, just let Leo do his thing and you can pet him if he comes to you, but don't chase after him. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely important to set those ground rules because kids are just like, ah, dog, let's play. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had no idea that they were scaring him until I was like, you're scaring my dog. (laughs) They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. So yeah, yeah, they just weren't thinking. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. Sometimes it's hard to anticipate those things until they happen, unless you're working with someone who is familiar with that coming up a lot and things to be like, oh, hey, watch out for this. But now you know what kind of ground rules to set with the kids. So that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like Leo really knows how to find some self-care and run in circles outside. (laughs) Yeah, I can tell once he goes out there for five minutes or so, he comes back and he's like more refreshed. Yeah. What's something that you've learned other than set ground rules at recess and make sure kids know loud noises aren't his favorite? What's something that you've really learned over the past few weeks of bringing him to school with you? 
I think just something recently is like I set boundaries with students and just letting them know like they can't just come in when it's me and Leo like if they're coming in with a lot of anger a lot of uh, emotions you know I'll say you know I would love for you to come in with me and Leo but you have to calm down because Mm -hmm. you're gonna freak Leo out yeah acting like that or you know talking like that and so it's not just like a normal day when it's just me at school. Like I have to be more aware of Leo's needs and also students' needs. So yeah. just trying to learn that and at two different schools, that can be kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. I'm curious what his days off look like. Does he go to daycare? Does he get to hang out at home? Like what does that look like for him? So that's so funny you ask that. The kids ask that all the time on the (laughs) days that Leo is not there. They're like, what do you think Leo's doing right now? (laughs) So I would say he is at home. He's here at my house with my other dog. And we keep him in our kitchen, which is a tile area. Okay. And so they just hang out there all day together. And Leo loves that, just having those days with my other dog, just to hang out and relax and Uh, They just look out the window and I always turn on the music for him. So I always say he's at home listening to music. (laughs) Do you ever ask them what they think he's doing? No, but I should do that. That I'd be curious to know what they come up with because kids get pretty creative. And so many kids, they're like, will you please tell Leo I said hi? And I'm like, oh, yes, I will. But yeah, I think that's really cute when they do that. Yeah. I see a couple of questions in the chat. Someone mentioned that they're getting a dog for their autism and curious what they should know before they get them. I think what they're actually referring to is probably a service dog or an emotional support animal, which is a little different than a therapy dog. As you know, service dogs or emotional support animals work with one person, whereas therapy dogs work with a lot of people. So it's definitely different expectations. So I would say look for someone who works with service dogs in your area and find out what they would recommend for you. Because I don't know about you, Kaylee, but I'm not an expert on service dogs for autism. But I will say there's an influencer named Nathan Selov that one of our previous guests, Dr. Sunday, was inspired by with animal assisted interventions. And he has a YouTube channel documenting his journey with his service dog, Sylvia. And it was for autism, living with autism. And so that could be a really great resource for you to check out, definitely. Yeah. Can I add something? Yeah, please do. Leo is really good about going into the special education class. You know, it's not exactly autism, but some of them probably do have that. And I would say if you're looking for a dog for that, get one that's demeanor is like really chill. I just don't think Wheaton Terrier probably would be very good for that because Leo, I mean, he's really good with them, but I just don't think he could spend all day long in that environment because he doesn't like the fast movements and he doesn't like the loud noises, but he does really really good and he lets him hang on him and the other day a kid bit his foot and he just was let him do it that's great that he didn't react <laughs> yeah, yeah so I would do like a lot of research on what kind of dog you should get for that yeah definitely talk to other people who have had a service dog for autism too and just make sure you find out what works and what doesn't work for them obviously every person every dog is different but if you can find similar experiences it's helpful yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's really great. Woody DeBassett said, who is Leo certified with? As I recall, through your trainer, right? Yes. Through- not through an organization. The school district I work at, they didn't require a organization or anything. And so I got it through Jeremy Reinhardt dog training. His dog is actually a certified therapy dog. And so he certifies dogs through his organization that he has of his own. Okay. And that's there in Kansas City? It's in the Kansas City area, yes. Is there a very big therapy dog community there in Kansas City? Well, not really where I work. I work in the outskirts of the Kansas City area. But I would say, like, in the Kansas City area, it'd probably be more popular. I don't really know too many people that have a therapy dog, actually, so... That's okay. I was just curious. It's always interesting to see where pockets of therapy dogs pop up at. So. Yeah, that would be cool. We could like meet up and like yeah. I don't know, share stories. That would be really fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully you can join us over on the therapy dog talk community because I know there are other dogs in there who do work at schools too. So even though they aren't in your area, you can still right. be able to share stories. Yeah. Yeah. Roxy, I'm really glad that you found Therapy Dog Talk as well and that it's really helpful for you to share knowledge and experiences here. We'll have to have you on an episode because I don't think we've had you yet. (laughs) Ooh, 
Yeah, I always love meeting new friends, so. Are there any stories that really stand out to you as just like a sign that this is a really good path for you and for Leo, at least for now, and this is why you're doing it? I would say just yesterday, there were two girls that they just weren't really getting along. They were sixth graders, and Leo was in the room, and he was just sitting in front of me, and they were in front of me. And I didn't say or really do anything, and they just started talking, and they both shared their stories because they hadn't really had this a safe place to share like about their life story, but they knew they both have struggles. And it was just so powerful, and like they were just petting Leo, and interacting with Leo while they're talking, and like I literally did did nothing. I just listened, and it was just such a cool experience to see. They just felt so safe in there. I think Leo had a big part of that. So that was the most recent story, yeah. That's so great that he's able to make an impact with you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, do you have any advice for someone else who's interested in either getting started with a therapy dog or maybe they're a school counselor and interested in bringing a dog to work with them? What have you kind of learned along the way that you would want to tell you when you started your journey (laughs) or someone following behind your footsteps? Well, I wouldn't say that my journey has been perfect. But I would say that I have learned that I really helped starting Leo in doggy training, like from the very beginning, like getting him into a trainer, getting him around a lot of other dogs, getting him around a lot of other people. And this was really even before I thought I would have him as a therapy dog. I just wanted him to be a good dog. And then I just, you know, the advice I would say is if you have a dog that has good demeanor and you have the opportunity to take them places to help other people, maybe it's in your workplace or just something that you want to do on the side at like a nursing home or something, your dog could make such a big difference and they could thrive and like just be an even better dog than they were before. Just knowing that they have like, I don't know, an identity in something and like not just to stay at home all day. So I would encourage you, anybody that has a dog that's really good just to get him certified as a therapy dog to help people. I love that. Kaylee, is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here? Well, I'm kind of curious. Maybe you've shared before, but how did you start this whole therapy dog talk? Yeah, so I also am a mental health professional. I have an associate marriage and family therapy is where I'm at on my journey. And I'm working towards becoming an animal assisted play therapy team with my pup. So she's three. She's a rescue. Our journey has not been linear. I embrace being perfectly imperfect. (laughs) But along the way, I've also become a dog trainer and just really enjoyed working with her and watching her grow. So maybe we'll reach that point someday and maybe we won't. But along the way, I've just really enjoyed getting to know other therapy dog teams. And so I was in a group of other therapy dog teams on Instagram, just a DM group that someone started. And as I became friends with them, I was like, you know, it would be really cool just to do Instagram lives and hear their stories and share them with other people. And it just grew from there. So (laughs) originally it was people I knew and now I get to meet people by doing this. So it's been a really fun adventure. Wow, that's great. That's yeah. really cool. So you are a therapy dog trainer or just a dog trainer? Just a dog trainer. And I've done the training to become a dog trainer, but I don't work with clients because I already have a day job in tech and I see clients as an associate therapist and I don't really have time to have big clients right now for dog training, but I work with my own dog and some friends' dogs just as we go about life. So that's kind of where I'm focusing right now, but I'm really loving combining dog psychology and human human psychology and seeing where we're like or similar and where we're different and how we can really use that to have fun working with our dogs so wow yeah that's awesome that's yeah like all my favorite things you get to do <laughs> dogs <laughs> and therapy so that's yeah awesome. that's kind of how I feel I kind of stumbled into it I was like wait a minute all of these things go together that I really enjoy that's fantastic so yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah thanks for asking yeah I don't really think I have anything else. Okay. Well, if anyone wants to follow your journey, they can find you at Leo the Lovey, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kayla. I really appreciate you coming back and having this chat with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me again. Of course. Take care. Right, you too. Bye. Bye.